When you want a satisfying and nutritious dinner recipe, you've got to try this gluten-free meatloaf. I've swapped out breadcrumbs and used almond flour instead in this classic American recipe that's perfect for your hungry family. It's gluten-free and grain-free and made with real food ingredients. I'm also making this meatloaf recipe into an easy meal prep paired with sweet potato fries and broccoli. So stay tuned to the end where I combine all the ingredients into a super yummy meal prep. So let's go ahead and jump into the recipes. So I did not grow up eating meatloaf, but I have really come to love it as an adult. And this recipe is so easy. We're just starting with about one and a half to two pounds of grass fed ground beef. So grass fed beef is really important, especially if you're on a paleo diet, it helps create a better nutritional profile. And it also helps avoid getting meat from feedlots. And if you want to be extra sure about that, you can look for grass fed and grass finished ground beef. You'll probably need to go to a specialty market or buy it online. So I'm preheating my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We're just gonna put together the ingredients and then we'll bake the meatloaf for about an hour. So to the ground beef, I'm going to add about a half of a chopped onion. I'm actually using shallots because I find that they, um, that I digest shallots better than regular onion, but you can use regular red onion if you like. Then we're also going to add about a fourth of a cup, maybe a little bit more of fresh flat leaf parsley. And this just adds a little bit of nice green to the meatloaf. It just helps add a little bit more color and texture and it looks nice. Then we're going to add our half a cup of almond flour. Now this almond flour will replace the breadcrumbs in the meatloaf. Breadcrumbs are traditionally used in the meatloaf as a binder, but again, we're making this grain-free and gluten-free, so we're using almond flour. Next, we're going to use two eggs that I've just lightly beaten, and that will also act as a binder for the meatloaf. And then the last ingredients are a simple spice blend. I use a little bit of sea salt, uh, dried oregano, black pepper, and garlic powder. We're just gonna add that into the meatloaf. And then, this is where it gets a little messy. I'm gonna use my hands to mix together the meat and all the other ingredients. And while I do that, I just wanna let you guys know I've been a little absent from making videos lately. It's been a few weeks. I had to take a little break, um, not for any serious reason, but mostly because I have been creating a ton of new recipes on my website, cleaneatingkitchen.com. And I actually post recipes there five to seven times a week. So that keeps me pretty busy. And then what I do for this channel is pick my favorite recipes and the ones that I think that you would really like, and then I make videos for them like this. So I'm mixing everything up. We don't wanna over mix it, but we wanna make sure that everything gets well combined. We don't want any bites of almond flour or too many onions in one bite. And we wanna make sure the eggs get incorporated so everything helps stick together really well. Now this makes a, quite a lot of meatloaf. It's gonna make a nice thick meatloaf. I'm gonna pop this in the oven and then I'll show you how it comes out. While I got the meatloaf in the oven, I prepared my steamed vegetables and my sweet potato chips. The steamed vegetables I actually made from frozen, so I just cooked them in the microwave with a little bit of water. You could definitely do fresh broccoli and also just steam that a little tiny bit. And then for the sweet potato fries, I do like to cut the peel off my sweet potatoes. I feel like I just digest them easier without the peel, but you can leave the peel on. And then I cut them into fry shapes. Um, and you can also, you can get fancy and try to make them all uniform. I just like to cut them about a quarter inch in width and that will ensure that they all cook at the same amount of time. And then what I did was just put the sweet potato fries on a baking sheet that I lined with foil and parchment paper for easy cleanup, and then tossed the fries with a little bit of avocado oil, maybe about two to three tablespoons, 
and then a little bit of sea salt and then I use some ground cinnamon just because I feel like sweet potatoes and cinnamon go so well together. You could make them more savory with uh, smoked paprika and garlic powder. And then I bake the sweet potato fries right along with the meatloaf. Now I mentioned that we cooked the meatloaf for 30 minutes, then I took it out of the oven and put a little bit of prepared ketchup on top, anywhere from about a third a cup to about a half a cup. And I will put all of the recipes in the description box below. Some of the recipes are on my website, cleaneatingkitchen.com, and some I'll actually put in the description box. You can find everything you need there, but then I bake the sweet potato fries right along with the meatloaf while it finished cooking for about another 30 to 40 minutes. Now, when everything is done cooking, that's when I like to assemble the meal prep. And this made enough for five meals. So if you're a single person, you can make this on Sunday and you'll have dinner for the whole week. Or if you are a couple, then you can make this and you'll have dinner for two to three nights. This could also be a great lunch. I think meatloaf is a little bit on the more filling side and so I think it's a perfect dinner and paired with the veggies and the sweet potato fries. It is honestly one of the most delicious meals that I make. It's one of my favorites. It is such a typical paleo meal with the protein and the complex carbs and the green veggies and it's just the perfect meal prep. If you don't want to meal prep it, you can just make the meatloaf by itself and enjoy it with whatever sides that you like. I hope that you like this video. I'll link to some of my other meal prep videos and I will see you in the next one.